Today's video, we're going to be focusing on how to nail a black eyeshadow. I gotta move my mirror. It's like, feel like I'm staring at myself and it's really weird. Excuse me while I deal with my issues. Today we're going to be talking about and showing how to nail the perfect black eyeshadow look. I know black eyeshadow can be a little bit intimidating. Uh, you can look like a panda. You can look like you got punched in the face. You can look like you ran into a doorway. We're gonna make it so that doesn't happen to you ever again because it happened to me in the past. I did not know how to wear black eyeshadow, but I thought I did and I thought I looked real good. No, you didn't look good. You can thank Snapchat fam for this. I asked uh, Snap fam, uh, a few days ago about what you all wanted to see. I gave you two choices and this is what you picked. So uh, yeah, today's exciting too because I'm gonna be using the Laura Lee Cat's Pajamas palette. Woo! Congratulations to Laura on this. This is really exciting. She did send this to me. So we're gonna be using this eyeshadow for th this eyeshadow palette for this look. Um, I'm excited to use it. I haven't played with it at all. So let's go ahead and jump into the video. Before we do, join the notification squad and hit the little bell icon and subscribe to my channel. Uh, it's free and that's probably one of the only things in life that is free other than love. We are going to be doing foundation after the eyeshadow because inevitably with a dark black eyeshadow look or any smoky look in general, you're gonna have a lot of fallout no matter what eyeshadow you're using, no matter what products you're using. I'm gonna start with a little bit of color corrector in these areas because with a darker black eyeshadow look, you don't want this area to be dark. It'll just add a little bit too much drama to your look. Then I'm gonna go in with a concealer. Today I'm gonna be using the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye in Light. Like literally this whole thing you can't even read anymore. It's not even that old. It's kinda crazy. Taking Okie Dokie from the palette, I'm just gonna take a big fluffy brush and just kinda wash this all over my entire eye area just to set it. You wanna do this because if you don't set your foundation um, or your concealer or whatever it is that you use to put on your eyes, your black eyeshadow, especially darker eyeshadow, any eyeshadow, honestly, like if I'm, if I'm real, on any eyeshadow, as soon as you put it on, it's gonna stick to the wetter, wettest patches of this area. It's also going to crease on you. With a black eyeshadow look, it is very important. Listen, it's very important to do like at least two, one transition shade. I would do two to three transition shades. The reason being is that a black pigment is so dark and black, if you're using a good quality eyeshadow, that it's going to, you wanna make it as easy as possible to blend out and you want that transition flawless or as flawless as possible. So the different shades are going to help you with that. So first you're gonna to wanna to add a, the lightest transition shade and then a little bit deeper closer to the black and then even closer to the black. So today um, I'm gonna go for a warm uh, black eyeshadow look. So I'm gonna be taking this one first. This is Bomb Diggity right here. This is gonna be the first transition shade. For the transition shade, you're definitely going to want to use a very nice fluffy blending brush such as this. This is a Sugar Pill or uh, this guy, which is Royal and Lang Nickel, which I have a discount code for you guys here. And then this is a NYX fluffy brush. You don't wanna use a dense like brush that's just dense or a flat brush. It's not gonna give you the transition. It, it needs to basically blow out the eyeshadow. So if you're using something that's kind of dense like this, it doesn't really look like it is, but it's pretty dense or something like this, you're not gonna be able to diffuse your eyeshadow out enough and it's just not, it's just gonna look like a hot mess. So so this transition shade, you're gonna wanna take the highest, obviously, because it's going to be the lightest. And the transition shade, you're gonna wanna take all the way in here, the lightest one. Sometimes you have to pull your skin like this too, because if you wipe too fast and you have extra skin, see how it does those little wrinkles right there? It'll get caught up and you'll have little notches in your eyeshadow, so watch out. Now I'm taking a slightly smaller brush to go in here, I'm gonna take Cray Cray and put that in the crease. Since this is a bit of a darker shade, I'm kind of stopping it about right here, whereas we took the other one all the way kind of in. Blend, blend, blend. These shades are so pretty. Now, when it comes to the eyeshadow that you're going to use, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you use a nice eyeshadow. 
Um, Urban Decay has an amazing blackout eyeshadow. It works so well. Laura Lee's, as I was doing the don't part of this, is very pigmented, great black eyeshadow. So if you're using like a not great black eyeshadow, like maybe it's just, maybe it's MAC. I used to use MAC Carbon and it is not a good eyeshadow. Um, it's also not cruelty free. But uh, if you use a crappy eyeshadow that's black, it's gonna come out more of a gray and it's not gonna give you the coverage that you want, which is in turn gonna make your eyeshadow look not black and a little bit splotchy. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add a little bit of a dark base to my eyelid just so that my eyeshadow is gonna stick really well and so that it'll be as black as possible. So for that, I'm gonna be using the NYX black base like this. I'm just gonna take a little, a little flat brush. Now we have a super nice base for our black eyeshadow. So taking the same brush, I'm gonna dip into Oddball from Laura's palette. So instead of wiping, I'm going to be stippling this onto the lid and making sure that I'm bringing it all the way down to the lash line and not leaving any skin tones between the black eyeshadow and my lash line. Look how freaking pigmented her eyeshadow is. So good. I'm avoiding the inner corner again as well. Kind of working this up into the crease a little bit. Still using stippling motions. If you wipe, you're just gonna, you're just not gonna get the payoff that you want. Black eyeshadow is not a quick eyeshadow look. So if you want quick, this is not for you. Now going back and forth between the brush that we put uh, Cray Cray on with, just gonna kind of start blending this out. Just gonna keep building this up. Blend, 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 and blend some more. Once you've got this pretty damn blended, I'm gonna wipe off my brush, the little one, and I'm just going to start stippling this way so we don't have a harsh, like abrupt stop where we stopped the black eyeshadow. A little too much color in this area. You can take the bone shade and just go like this. It'll help you blend it out and it'll help lighten the area. Now I'm gonna take a dark liner and just run this along the lash line to make sure it's as dark as we'd like it to be closest to the lash line. It helps us conceal our false lashes and makes sure there's no like skin tone spots near the lash line. Now we get to wipe away any nasties that fell underneath the eyes. I'm taking the Japanese Champagne Collection Velvet Touch and I'm going to be setting under the eye area with this and the rest of the face. I always set underneath the eye area. It helps it not be, like if this is wet under here, it's literally a magnet for your eyeshadow to just stick to it. Going in with Bomb Diggity, kind of doing the same thing as we did on the top. You wanna make sure you don't bring your eyeshadow too far down cause you're gonna look like Fester Adams. Now filling the waterline with this, this is the Smashbox Fishnet um, eyeliner. You wanna use a good eyeliner. You wanna use one that is black, black, not gray. And you make wanna make sure that you work it not, not only onto your waterline, but into your lash line as well so that it's really in between there and no skin tones are showing through. Once you've done that, you're gonna wanna go in and smudge it out. For brows, I do suggest doing like a more, a, like a lighter eyebrow as opposed to like a really thick, sharp, dark one. If you have dark hair, that's a different story. But if you have light hair like me and you're putting on like a really dark, harsh brow, personally, I just think it looks too harsh with the black eyeshadow look. To keep the eyes like nice and bright and to like reflect light, I like to take the shade that I'm gonna use for a highlight and pop that in the inner corner area just to add a little bit of sparkle. This is the Ofra Blissful Highlighter. If I didn't say anything, it's gonna be in the description box. Next up is contour. You wanna make sure that you're using a contour that's like not too dark because you don't want different areas of your face kind of competing for attention. 
So I'm just gonna use a little bit of contour. It doesn't have to be anything too intense. On to blush. Make sure you're not using like a pink or a red blush. Um, it just pretty much never looks good with black eyeshadow. It just kind of pulls you back to like 80s makeup which I think was awful. <laughs> I tend to like to stick with more neutral, nudey, peachy tones. So I'm gonna be using this one right here. This is Papa Don't Peach by Too Faced. Smells really good too. Again, you want something that's gonna complement the look and not just stand out and like compete for attention. Highlight with a look like this, again, we don't want to um, accentuate any skin texture or compete with the eye look. So you wanna go with a really finely milled, nice pressed highlighter. I'm gonna, Ofra is one of my favorite highlighters ever. This is Blissful, this is what we put on the inner corner. I'm gonna go ahead and use this guy for highlight today. You also wanna go with a shade that kind of matches your eye look, like we have kind of a warm, a uh, smoky eye going on right now, so I have kind of gone with like a nice rose gold sort of highlight rather than like a blue toned highlight or all those crazy ones out there right now. Lipstick on off camera because my camera is overheating, so we have to hurry this up. For lips, I like to go with a nude lip because once again, I'm not trying to look super dark, vampy. Um, for me, with the tattoos, it's just, in my opinion, too much. Uh, and I think it kind of is on anyone, um, unless you're doing kind of more of a toned down black smoky eye, then it could be okay to add a dark lip, but really you can do whatever you'd like. I personally just think it's way more complimentary to the eyeshadow look if you go with a lighter nude lip. So for today's lip, I used uh, Morphe's Virgin and Jealousy together to kind of create a little bit of a lighter look in the center of the lip. You might just realize my light is like fully facing, not where it's supposed to be facing at all. That's better, wow. All right, that brings us to the end of this kind of long video. Um, hopefully I was able to cut it down a little shorter than I think it might be. I uh, really enjoyed working with Laura Lee's palette. The colors, the shades blend out amazingly. I really like the palette, I think it's beautiful. I'm excited to get into these more cranberry shades. Love these though, they blend out really nicely. These metallics are also really nice, they swatch beautifully. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below if you're a little uh, more confident now about wearing black eyeshadow, hopefully. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and of course, we'll see you in the next video. Since you've made it this far, you might as well go ahead and watch the next video on my channel, which you can click to right here on the screen. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I will see you in the next video. Bye. All right, it is live right now. Ryan just finished building it. It looks amazing. I hope you guys enjoy. As I said earlier, we're gonna be